Well, good afternoon, folks. This is Bill Costanzo, Livestock Guardian Dog Research Specialist at the AgriLife Center in San Angelo. Uh, today we'll be answering uh, just a couple questions uh, that were posted this month uh, for our live Q&A. Uh, I do want to thank the Sheep and Goat Predator Management Board for providing funding for our program and also uh, Dr. Redden, the, the Center Director, for providing leadership for the program. Uh, it should be a, a fairly short uh, Oh, Q and A today. Uh, I've only, like I said, I've only got a couple questions. Unless anybody has any any live questions that they want to post, uh, the the first question today comes from Martin Villa. Uh, he has his question was is uh, when we isolate a pup in in the bonding pen um, from other dogs, uh, you know, is that detrimental to to the the puppy learning? Uh, dog behaviors that they need to know as an adult and so that um, oh they can get along with other dogs that are in your your guarding pack and he's having an issue with with a, a great Pyrenees female and a, and a Kangle fem female that he has um, and he's wondering if, if maybe that was the cause so um, my suggestion on that is that um, this is why it's really important to you know wait and get a pup that's fully weaned and this is one of the reasons why we um, look for eight week old pups uh, to start off in our bonding um, project uh, a lot of times pups will, will start to be weaned off at about six weeks of age and they can definitely be pulled from their their mother at that point and, and go out and start the uh, the actual bonding process on your ranch but you know if you're able to, to leave that pup for those extra couple weeks uh, people don't really realize how much um, developmental process is going on in the puppy's brain and in their those those few weeks of life, and so that puppy learns a, a whole bunch of different types of behaviors as it interacts with other puppies, um, oh, in that litter, and, and the female, and possibly even the uh, the male dog, um, oh, that it, it was its father, and any other dogs that might be um, oh, around in the area that that are working dogs. And so, uh, again, you know, I try to encourage you to, to wait at least until the eight-week mark. Um, I, I wouldn't say waiting until 10 is better, however, uh, because what happens is the, the portion of the dog's brain that's developing for actually bonding to livestock it, it is also going through at that phase, and that, uh, that period closes at about 14, maybe 16 weeks at the most. Um, that area is, is closed off and so the bond that forms after that is definitely not as strong and that's one of the reasons why some dogs roam more is because they weren't bonded at, at a proper age. Uh, now as far as handling a situation where you have two um, dogs that are close to the same age and the same sex and that they're not fixed um, that you're used for breeding for instance uh, you know he's had this uh, this Great Pyrenees female a lot longer. The the Kangle female is newer, um, even though the dogs are, are closer in age uh, to the same age. And so, um, oh, my suggestion, Martin, is you know to definitely you know try to keep the dogs separated. I guess if you can, if you can have them in two different pastures, uh, maybe even separated by a pasture with some you know splitting up your livestock. Uh, the the Kangle dogs that that we've had experience with. Um, have been very aggressive towards other dogs and so uh, you know I would say that at some point your your Kangle female is going to probably be bigger uh, you know when she gets full grown than, than your Pyrenees female and she's probably going to win the fight and she may end up even killing your uh, great Pyrenees female that you've had for a little bit longer so um, try to keep those dogs separated as much as possible um, and you know if if they're having fighting at a specific time of the, of, of the year, maybe when they're both in heat or something like that, you may even need to kennel them during that time uh, to, to keep any injuries uh, from happening for your dogs. Uh, the second question um, I had come up was actually from a couple producers today. They, they were actually via emails, and so I thought I'd address those on the, on the Q&A today also. Uh, a couple producers have, are having issues with their livestock guardian dogs as the weather is getting warmer. Uh, uh, jumping into their water troughs that their livestock um, are using and basically making a, a very large mud puddle out of it and so then the water is dirty and then the livestock don't want to drink it and so that's obviously a problem. Uh, you know what I would say is if, if you have the ability to um, 
you know, put some sort of a barrier over the top of the, the water trough uh, so that obviously the livestock can drink still um, and even so your guardian dog can drink but so they can't get inside of it. Uh, you know, maybe some, um, some boards in, in kind of a crisscross pattern or some, um, oh, like cattle panel, like welded cattle panel uh, pieces. Uh, those those openings are generally larger than like on sheep and goat panels, and so the animals should be able to get their head through it, um, or, or at least their their face into it, so that they can drink some water. And the dog should also be able to do that too. Uh, one producer sent me a picture, um, and, and basically what they did is, you know, they had a water trough that separated on each side of the fence, and they just placed a board, uh, just a, a two by four, over it and um, I'll bolted it down on, onto the trough and so the dog can't jump into um, either side of, of the, uh, the water trough now but the livestock and the dog can, can still drink out of it. So that's a suggestion for you, you know, if you're having some issues with your, your guardian dog making a large mud puddle out of your, out of your water troughs now that the weather is getting a little bit warmer. Uh, another question that I get a lot of times, uh, you know, especially as, as the spring um, closes out and we start getting into the summer uh, obviously you know long-haired dogs are, are going to need some grooming of their coats uh, it, it's really important that uh, you take some time if you have a long-haired guardian dog and, and brush them out to get rid of that uh, all, all that loose hair from their winter coat uh, what happens if if you leave all that hair in there is basically that's one reason why the dogs get a lot of mats and then they'll develop hot spots underneath there um, you know, spear grass and foxtails and all kinds of other things will get stuck in there and you'll get infections um, in their legs and in their, their body. Um, and sometimes they can be very severe. Uh, if you follow our program, some of you might remember uh, when we had Miley in the kennel and she had a really severe leg infection uh, because she had some um, all spear grass seeds that had worked in, gotten stuck underneath a mat on one of her back legs and caused a pretty bad infection for her. So definitely try to groom your dogs as much as possible until all that winter coat um, is kind of cleaned out of them. Uh, oh, you, you shouldn't clip your dogs, so you don't want to take a clippers and you know just peel all the hair off. Now, all these dogs have a double hair coat, even the short-haired um, guardian dogs, and so um, you know trimming out the mats is fine. Going through and, and trimming up their belly, inner legs, uh, kind of up through their their lower chest to uh, kind of alleviate some of that extra hair in there. Uh, but make sure you leave it at least a, you know, about a half an inch long. Um, you don't want uh, the dog to, to lay down in the sun and, and get like a sunburn, because that, that can definitely happen. So uh, I don't see any uh, producer posted questions, and, and like I said, I, I don't really have a bunch today. Uh, um, with that, I think we're going to wrap up our Q&A for May here today. Uh, we'll have one again the, the first Thursday in June. Uh, thank you everyone for, for logging in today and uh, again I would like to thank the Sheep and Goat Predator Management Board for, for funding and uh, Dr. Edden for, for his leadership here in the program. So, uh, feel free to reach out to me anytime either via Facebook or uh, YouTube, Instagram or, or our website. Uh, hope everyone has a good day. Thank you all for watching.